Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony will begin momentarily. Please take your seats and silence all electronic devices. On behalf of Lieutenant General Patrick D. Frank and Command Sergeant Major Garza, good afternoon and welcome to the United States Army Command's Best Squad Competition Recognition Ceremony. I am Master Sergeant Chris Olver and I will be your narrator for the day. We would like to welcome our distinguished visitors who are joining us here today, Major General McCormick, Brigadier General Wegscheider, Sergeant Major Pritz, Sergeant Major Saunders. Also, please join me in welcoming all of the strong sergeants. Let's try that one more time with everybody. Please welcome all of the strong sergeants. These folks have earned the title of USR Sense Best Squads. Please rise for the invocation given by Chaplain Swift and remain standing for the national anthem. We are a nation of many different philosophical and religious beliefs. If your traditions include prayer, I invite you to join with me as I pray according to my own faith. Heavenly Father, I invite your presence here today as we recognize the hard work of the 14 squads that participated in the best squad competition, as well as the countless others that supported them during their train-up. Regardless of the competition outcome, grant to each a healthy sense of pride in their accomplishment. May each squad member take their lessons learned and diligently share them throughout their current and future units, thus being an important building block in the process of making future strong squads. I pray these things in your most holy name. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Although only one squad can earn the title of the best squad, all of the competitors have exhibited an amazing and winning warrior spirit. This is the second year the Army has challenged the force by holding a best squad competition. In the past, the Army conducted the best warrior competition to declare the best soldier and best NCO in each command. The inaugural event stems from the This Is My Squad initiative by the Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael Grinston. The Sergeant Major of the Army says, we want to assess squads on their tactical, technical proficiency, as well as their cohesiveness and ability to work as a team. For over two years, I've talked about the importance of building a cohesive team that is highly trained, disciplined, and fit. Now it's time to measure ourselves against that standard. Soldiers in this year's best squad competition competed in a grueling five-day event held at both Camp Arif John and Camp Buring, Kuwait. The teams endured physical and mental challenges in temperatures exceeding 108 degrees. The events for this competition included an Army combat fitness test, weapons proficiency and marksmanship skills, squad tactical missions, unknown distance foot march, an obstacle course, a written and practical land navigation test, and a squad board appearance. This competition started with 14 squads, made up of five members each. Throughout the physical and mentally demanding week, squads went through an elimination process, cutting that down to six squads. Those squads have come to be known as the Super Six. 
for demonstrating a high standard of proficiency, discipline, fitness, and team cohesion. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the screen to view the strong squads in action. Now, what does it take to win? You're gonna do some physical stuff. You're gonna do weapons. None of that's a secret. This competition is really a test to see which squad has the most cohesion. What you're gonna to see today is a lot of motivation, a lot of spree de corps, a lot of squads competing to be the U.S. Parsit best squad for 2023. Here's what the best squad competition does at US RSIT. It's gonna challenge every squad member. It's gonna challenge our soldiers, in particular the squad leader. We started off with 14 squads across the theater of operation. We challenged the squads both with the intangibles, such as good order and discipline, the cohesion of the squad, the pride in the squad, and the trust that the squad builds. But we've also done the tangible tasks, similar tasks like the Army Combat Fitness Test. The, uh, they negotiated an obstacle course. They did rifle marksmanship training where they qualified with their M4s. They also shot the M17 pistol and they shot the M240 Bravo. They conducted a stress shoot that was pretty challenging. They did day and night land navigation. They also went through mission lanes. What they'll end up doing is conducting an eight to 12 mile foot march followed by a board, not your traditional board, but a board where senior sergeant majors are gonna ask them questions, thought-provoking questions on this competition. This competition also produces strong sergeants that make strong soldiers. Strong soldiers make strong squads. Strong squads are responsible for winning our nation's wars. And as the chief of staff of the Army always says, winning absolutely matters. By you coming out here competing, you just made the Army even more lethal than it was. So there's no loser here. As the SMA has consistently said over the last three and a half years, this is about building cohesive teams that are highly trained, that are disciplined, that are fit, that are ready to fight and win. Strong sergeants. Strong soldiers. We are. And so. Finish strong. Run through the tape, and we'll see who's the best squad for U.S. RCIT 2023. Whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce our guest speaker for today's ceremony, Command Sergeant Major of the United States Army Central and Third Army Command, Sergeant Major Garza. I, I was just uh, talking to General McCormick. Uh, they just took my entire speech on that video. So we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll play it. Master Oliver, thanks, thanks so much for, for the introduction. I know that most of you, uh, well, here's what I do know. I know that General Frank would absolutely want to be here today. Um, in fact, he has talked about the best squad competition ever since last year's runner-up at Forcecom level. He couldn't wait to be here. In fact, when he was out at the mission lanes, I mean, he enjoyed that so much. But unfortunately, he's not here. He is leading the first U.S. Saudi Arabia training meeting in Riyadh, which is a big deal to U.S. RCIT and building partner capacity across the AOR. So you've got me delivering this speech today. Before we get started, I want to recognize a few VIPs. So Major McCormick, thank you for being here. Absolutely appreciate you coming. Uh, Command Sergeant Major Pritz, uh, Brigadier General Wig Schneider, um, Command Sergeant Major Saunders, Senior leaders, fellow command sergeants, major soldiers and civilians, thank you all. Thanks for everyone being here. And particularly want to thank the squads, the competitors that competed over the past week. Please, a round of applause for the Super Six. <laughs> a big shout out to Mass Sergeant Reina. Mass Sergeant Reina, where are you? Yeah, he's way in the back, right? Way in the back, probably still doing things behind the scenes. 
this best squad competition doesn't occur right, without the support of Kim and the entire team. So if you've had anything to do with supporting this event, it takes a lot of resources to put this together. Please, another round of applause for those that supported uh, the best squad U.S. in 2023. Now, I challenge each of our competitors and our cadre to take back what they've learned here at this best squad competition to their units to continue to build those cohesive teams and those squads. As we say in U.S. Arsene, strong sergeants make strong soldiers. Strong soldiers make strong squads. Strong squads will fight and they'll win the nation's wars. And then as the chief has consistently said over the past three and a half years, winning absolutely matters. There is no second place in our profession. There is no second place. The importance of squads in the Army has moved from a competition focused on individual soldiers and NCOs to a competition focused on the basic formation of all of our units, and that's the squad. The most influential level of leadership is at the squad level. That is where the majority of our soldiers reside, and squads extend far beyond just your traditional infantry squads. It extends to any small unit group of soldiers that is connected by a non-commissioned officer. As the 3rd Army Command Sergeant Major, I have visited units all across the Middle East and Central Asia. And everywhere I go, I see Army squads getting after it. And when I talk to leaders of our partner nations, of our partner nation militaries, they're consistently asking me, what is the secret sauce of the United States Army? What makes the U.S. Army the greatest fighting force in the history of the world? And I tell them, it's about our small units and our small unit leaders. It's about team leaders and the empowerment of our squads. That is what makes our Army the best Army in the world. Let me tell you a story. It's about an Army squad leader who just 400 miles north of here fought for his team and his squad. In 2004, Staff Sergeant David Bellavia was a squad leader in 3rd Platoon, Alpha Company, 2-2 Infantry, in the 1st Infantry Division in Fallujah. His squad became trapped while clearing a house, so Staff Sergeant Bellavia grabbed an M240 and provided covering that allowed the squad to break contact and exit the house. Staff Sergeant Bellavia then observed an enemy insurgent preparing to launch a, ro a rocket-propelled grenade at his unit. So he assaulted the enemy position, killing that insurgent. Acting on instinct to save the members of his squad from an intimate danger, or an intimate threat, Staff Sergeant Bellavia continued to clear the enemy field house, killing four insurgents and badly wound, wounding a fifth. Squad leader Bellavia was presented the Bell of Honor in the White House in 2019 for his actions in combat. Staff Sergeant Bellavia is a strong sergeant. Now, not every squad and not every squad leader will be put in similar situation as Staff Sergeant Bellavia or his soldiers. But today, in U.S. Arson, in the U.S. Arson AOR, we continue to have squads in contact. So we need to continue to focus on readiness. We need to continue to focus on squads and always preparing our squads for combat. It is our duty to ensure that soldiers are ready to deploy, fight and win, and always return home safely. A former 3rd Army commander, General George S. Patton said, and I open quotations, battles are fought by platoons and squads. Place emphasis on small unit combat instruction so that it is conducted with the same precision as close order drill, close quotation. This best squad competition is focused on those small groups of soldiers who fight our nation's battles, those squads. Now for this purpose, in this competition, a squad consisted of five soldiers, one squad leader, 
one team leader, and three squad members. We evaluated them on traditional warrior tasks and battle drills and assessed tangible leadership qualities in tactical problem solving uh, in a tactical problem solving event or environment. We also measured the intangibles that I would argue with anyone. The intangibles are probably as important or more important than the tangibles, like good order and discipline, cohesion, pride in the squad, and trust. We know that in U.S. Arson, if we master the intangibles, if non-commissioned officers master those intangibles, it will generate tangible readiness. Over this week, the 14 squads were pushed hard, both physically and mentally. You can ask them. You'll get an opportunity to ask them here after this. They went through the Army Combat Fitness Test. They went through an obstacle course. They went through a series of ranges. They were tested on their weapon systems. They were tested on medical techniques. They were tested on patrolling. They were tested on land navigation, both night and, and day. We tested them on expert soldier badge tasks. We tested them on squad tactical missions to include counter unmanned aerial systems. And today, they actually conducted an eight mile foot march, 8.6 miles. And they didn't know how far they were gonna go. I told them anywhere from eight to 12 to 15. It would be no longer than 15. And they pushed themselves in the humidity this morning. And then they went to a board. And it wasn't your typical traditional board, E5, E6 promotion board, where we're asking you capability to brief. We had senior nominative sergeant majors at the board and they were asking thought-provoking questions. They were asking them to assess themselves on the individual level. They were asking themselves, or they were asking the squad to assess their performance as squads. And then it was a mini AAR so that we can improve this competition for 2024. And all the squads performed exceptionally well during that board. But here's the deal, right? Only one squad is going to be happy today. And it's a good thing and it's a bad thing, but there are no losers. Because after this competition, what we ended up doing, as if the Army wasn't lethal enough, we actually made the Army a little more lethal. Now, I'm honored to be able to name the winning squad. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let Mass Sergeant Olver do that. I know the anticipation is, is driving you crazy. Um, I know the winning squad. I'm not going to tell you. Uh, but here's what I do look forward to, bringing that winning squad to Fort Jackson, the Shaw Air Force Base, Fort Jackson, North Car uh, South Carolina, and giving them four to six weeks to train and be ready to represent U.S. Arsenal at the Force Com level. I think this particular squad, in fact, any one of these six squads would do exceptionally well at the Force Com level. And if you didn't know, last year, Charlie Troop, 153, from the Florida National Guard finished second place at Forcecom. And Forcecom consists of 750,000 soldiers. We won't finish second place this year. We will take Forcecom, and I anticipate that this squad will be HQDA's best squad for 2023. Let me end with a quote from the first Sergeant Major of the Army. Sergeant Major of the Army, William O. Wooldridge, he said this, he said, open quotations, take care of each man or woman as though they were your own brother or sister. That's what he would say. I am very proud to be a brother of every soldier in this formation. And I know if Lieutenant General Frank was here, he would absolutely say the same thing. Strong sergeants. We are Heads strong sergeants. Strong soldiers. We are Heads Mass Sergeant Oliver, come on up here and share with us who's our winners. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce the 2023 Best Squad Competitors. 
Don't hold your applause to the end. Representing Task Force Spartan from Charlie Company, first of the 134 Cav. The squad is led by Staff Sergeant Brandon Lenners. And the squad consists of Sergeant Caleb Bean, Specialist Gage McGill, Specialist Damon Keck, and Specialist Jaden Jensen. Representing Task Force Spartan from Bravo Company, second of the 153rd Infantry. The squad is led by Staff Sergeant Nathaniel Covens, and the squad consists of Sergeant Cecil Tomlinson, Specialist Curtis Josenberger, PFC Corey Gay, and Private First Class Jordan Corson. Representing First Theater Sustainment Command, the squad is led by Sergeant Tion Middleton. And the squad consists of Sergeant Michael Villarente, PFC Keelan Mark, Specialist Skyler Kressler, and Specialist Sarah Drunin. Representing Task Force Spartan from Task Force Blackjack, their squad is led by Staff Sergeant Kyle Marquez. The squad consists of Sergeant Nicholas Frutos, Specialist Alec Flores, Specialist John Flores, and Specialist Joshua Quistian. Representing Task Force Spartan from Charlie Company, 2nd of the 116th Combat Arms Battalion. Their squad is led by Staff Sergeant Joshua Hutchings. And this squad consists of Sergeant Douglas Kens Woods, Specialist Anthony Hill, Specialist Christian Brown, and Specialist David Hahn. Representing Task Force Spartan from Charlie Company, 2nd of the 116, Combat Arms Battalion. Their squad is led by Staff Sergeant Benjamin, Benjamin Maxwell. And their squad consists of Sergeant David Stegerman, Specialist Luke Barlow, Specialist Keegan Gould, and PFC Connor Baum. Please join me in a round of applause for all of the competitors. And now we'll announce the winners. The top performing non-commissioned officer and soldier of the 2023 Best Squad Competition were selected from their combined scores in all individual events. This includes expert soldier badge testing lanes, the Army Combat Fitness Test, land navigation tests, and marksmanship scores. Sergeant Major, want to come on up? Ladies and gentlemen, the top performing soldier of the best squad competition is from Task Force Spartan, Charlie Troop, 1st of the 134th Cavalry Regiment, Specialist Gage McGill. Sergeant Major Garza will present Specialist McGill with an Army Accommodation Medal and a plaque. One more round of applause, folks.
the top performing non-commissioned officer of the best squad competition is from Task Force Spartan, Charlie Company, second of the 116th Combined Arms Battalion, Staff Sergeant Joshua Hutchings. <laughs> Sergeant Major Garza will present Staff Sergeant Hutchings with an Army Accommodation Medal and plaque. Ladies and gentlemen, the second place finishers of the 2023 U.S. Arsent Best Squad Competition are from Task Force Blackjack of Task Force Martin. Please come forward. <laughs> Sergeant Major Garza will present the squad with an Army Achievement Medal and a trophy. And now, the winners of the 2023 U.S. Arsent Best Squad Competition are from Task Force Spartan, Charlie Company, 2nd of the 116 Combined Arms Battalion. Come forward. Sergeant Major Garza will now present each of the members of this squad with an Army Accommodation Medal and a trophy.
Folks, stand it up. If you could, please move up against the wall so the competitors can pass by. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join us in the singing of the Army Song. On behalf of Lieutenant General Frank, Command Sergeant Major Garza, and all of us at USR Sent, we thank you for your support and attendance. This concludes today's ceremony, and please join us next door in the Mirage Room for refreshments and to congratulate the teams. Thank you for attending.